sweet spirit of the living God. Fall fresh on us. Have your way in this service, O oh Lord. Open up our hearts, God, and open up our minds so that we can receive your word. God, I humble myself now unto you. Lord, hide me behind the cross so that you and you alone will get the glory. And Lord, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. <clears throat> this morning, I want to talk to you from the message of hope that we hear through the, read through the book of Isaiah. This morning I want to encourage you to keep looking forward. That phrase in itself, to keep looking forward. It means that one is willing to continue even during the times of great difficulty. It means that one is willing to continue even during the times of great difficulty. It also implies that one will keep fighting until the obstacle has been overcome. Looking forward and moving forward, it means that one will not allow external circumstances to stop you from the pursuit of your goal and reaching your destiny. And yes, I understand that life in itself can stagnate us. Life and its circumstances. No doubt, life circumstances, they have the capability of stagnating us to a state of progressing slowly. They also have the capability to stagnate us to a place of no progression at all. Mm. And so the question then becomes, how can I look forward when the past is capable of constantly calling me? See, because I've learned on this walk of life that it does not matter who you are. It does not matter where you are. It does not matter how old you are or what status you hold. The fact of the matter is that all of us in here we have a past that is capable of calling us. And so I submit to you this morning that you don't answer the call of your past, 
but you answer the call of God. Hallelujah. Because we learn in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, it lets us know that once we answer his call, once we receive Christ into our hearts, the scripture lets us know that we are a new creature. In fact, it says, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. And behold, all things are become new. See, when we come to salvation in Christ, we are made anew. Our slate has been wiped clean. And we are given a fresh and a clean start. And yet, what a fresh start. That does not mean that it will be easy to release the pains of our past. Being born again, it doesn't mean that we will automatically get rid of all the pains of our past. However, if we are going to be successful in looking forward, and if we're going to be successful in moving ahead on our Christian walk, then we have got to be willing to let go of the past. In Isaiah chapter 43, Judah, the people of God, They are called upon to forget their struggle to be a nation among nations. And so in order for us to grasp what Isaiah is saying, we need to know that this comes at a time of transition. It comes at a time of the Babylonian exile. Understand that the people of Israel, God's chosen people, they have been uprooted and they have been driven out of their homeland and now they are living in captivity. And can you imagine what they must feel to have been taken out of their homeland and to have been placed in a foreign land and now to be living in captivity? But the good news is that even in the midst of exile and even in the midst of their captivity, God sends a word to them through the prophet Isaiah. He sends a word letting them know that he is going to give them a fresh start. Hmm. And so I submit to you this morning that if you want to look forward, then you have to stop looking back. My God, if you want to look forward to a fresh start, if you want to look forward to a start anew, 
then you have got to be willing to put your past behind you. Jesus. And there in Isaiah chapter 43, verse 18, Isaiah says to them, don't remember the former things. In other words, he's saying to them, don't dwell on the things of your past. It reminds me of that age old saying. That saying goes that when one door closes, another door will open and it's sad to say that so often we look so long at the closed door that we miss the opportunity of the door that's being opened for us mm. and so I want to suggest to you this morning that you don't let your past paralyze you. But let it be a proclamation to push you into your purpose. My God, my God. Don't dwell on your past. But instead, trust God to do what you have, what he has never done in your life before trust God to do what you have never allowed him to do mm, in your life before I like this right here I like this because God is sending forth a promise of hope to the people of Israel he's sending forth a promise of hope to his people and so it is today he is sending forth that same promise of hope to you and to me and see this promise of hope can only be received when we choose to let go and forget the past and receive what God has for us right now. And I wonder this morning, do I have somebody in here who's willing to receive what God has for you <laughs> right now? Hallelujah. 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 He says to them, he says to them, one thing we must understand is that we can reflect on our past from time to time. He, he's, he's letting us know, and, 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 and I'm wanting to let you know this morning that we can reflect on our past from time to time to see where God has brought us from. We can reflect on our past so that it can remind us of what God has done for us. But we must not allow the former things to hinder us from looking forward. Amen. See, he's wanting the children of Israel to see that although their former deliverance out of Egypt was in itself a glorious work. He's wanting them, he's letting them know that they should always remember it and they should always consider it. But he's also wanting them to understand that their past deliverances they do not compare to what lies ahead for them. 
Mm. And I like the way it's written in the New Living Translation. The New Living Translation says it like this. It says, forget all of that. Because all of that is nothing compared to what I'm going to do in your life. Hallelujah. And that's a reason to rejoice right there. And, and that's a point right there that I don't want anybody in here to miss this morning. Because let me remind you of the children of Israel. You remember that they were under captivity by Pharaoh's rule. They were under bondage in Egypt. And God allowed them to be freed from the hand of Pharaoh. My God, my God. Some of y'all know the story. When, e when Israel began to leave out of Egypt, they had the Red Sea in front of them. And they had... Pharaoh's army behind them. And it was God that as they were facing the Red Sea, it was God who parted the Red Sea so that they could cross. It was God who delivered them out of the hand of Pharaoh. And what he's saying to them now is that, yes, I delivered you. And yes, I brought you out of Egypt. And however, that was a good and a miraculous miracle that does not compare to what I'm going to do for you in your life. My God, my God. And some of you today, no doubt God has done miraculous things in your life. For some of you sitting here right now, you know God to be a healer. He has healed your body. Some of you right now, you know God to be a savior. He has saved your soul. Somebody here right now know God to be redeemer and restorator. And he is letting you know right now that all of that is miraculous. And all of that that I've already done is good and worthy to be praised. But the good news is, is that he's saying to us that that does not compare to what he's about to do in your life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. That ought to put a clap in your hand. That ought to put a nod in your neck. In fact, it ought to put a smile on your face to know that what God has already done for you is not to be compared to what, woo, to what God is going to do for you. Hallelujah. Yes. Hmm. It's right there in verse 19. Verse 19 says, Behold, I will do a new thing now. Hmm. It shall spring forth, and shall ye not know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. My God, my God. In other words, what he is saying to us. He's wanting us to know that no matter your situation, you can keep looking forward no matter <laughs> your situation you can keep looking forward even if it looks as though you are wandering in the wilderness he says you can still 
look forward. Why? Because he said in his word that he will make a way for you. He will clear a path <laughs> just like he did with the Red Sea. He'll, he'll clear a path for you right in the midst of your wilderness. Even if you feel like you're living in a dry place, still you can look forward. Why? Because he said it <laughs> in his word. He said that even in the desert, oh my God, he will cause springs of water to rise up in the desert. And what this is meaning to us, in other words, what he is saying is that he's going to give life back to what has been dead in your life. My God. He said he's going to give life back to what has been dead in your life. In other words, he is the giver of life and he's the giver of restoration. So what that means to me is that we serve a God who's able to restore. And somebody here this morning, you need to know that God can restore your life. You need to know this morning that God can restore marriages, God can restore families, and God can restore hope back into this world. Hallelujah. We serve a wonderful God. And I don't know about you, but I'm going to keep looking ahead. I'm going to keep looking forward. No matter what comes my way, I'm going to keep looking forward. Even if I'm wandering in the wilderness, God said I could keep looking forward. Even if I'm faced with dry places in my life, God said I can keep looking forward because he would cause springs of water to come in the desert. I'm going to stay alert. I'm going to be present in this moment. Why? Because I know and I believe that God is going to do something new in my life. And so I encourage you this morning as we get ready to go into 2019, I say to you to keep looking ahead. May God bless you and may heaven smile upon you. Amen. Amen.